Have you ever wondered how ancient people moved stones as heavy as four jumbo jets without modern machines? Most people think it's either impossible or that aliens built it. But here's the truth. The Romans used smart physics, clever engineering, and careful planning to move these massive stones. Once you understand how they did it, you'll see ancient civilizations in a completely new way. Because impossible is just a problem waiting for patience and math. Welcome to Amazing Earth. High in Lebanon's Bekaa Valley sits an ancient structure called Baalbek. The Romans built a massive temple there and called it Heliopolis, the city of the sun. But the real mystery isn't the temple itself. It's what sits underneath it. Beneath the temple's towering columns, three enormous limestone blocks sit in the western wall. They're called the trilophon. Each stone measures 19 meters long, about as long as a tennis court. Each stands 4.2 meters tall and 3.6 meters thick. And each one weighs about 800 tons. A Boeing 747 jumbo jet weighs about 180 tons when empty. These trilithon stones weigh four times more than that enormous airplane. The Romans didn't just move them. They moved them nearly 800 meters from the quarry. They lifted them seven meters into the air. And they fit them together so precisely that the gaps between them are less than half a millimeter wide. Outside Baalbek in the ancient quarry, three stones are even larger. In 2014, German archaeologists found something that changed everything. They call it the Forgotten Stone. It measures 19.6 meters long, 6 meters wide, and 5.5 meters high. It weighs between 1,500 and 1,650 tons. That's nine times heavier than an empty jumbo jet. It was cut from solid rock with tools that shouldn't have been able to do such precise work. The surfaces are smooth. The edges are clean. Someone knew exactly what they were doing. Tool marks on the forgotten stone match those on the trilithon stones. This shows the same people made them using the same methods. The smooth surfaces prove it was getting ready to be moved, not abandoned because something went wrong, but left behind when plans changed or money ran out. For centuries, people said these stones prove ancient aliens existed or that lost civilizations had advanced technology. You can understand why. Look at the numbers. Do the math. Move an 800-ton object with people, wood, and rope? It sounds crazy. But archaeologists and engineers found the real answer through careful research and modern scanning technology. What the Romans did at Baalbek wasn't magic. It was physics. Smart, calculated physics that pushed human ability to its limit. Modern cranes can lift 800 tons, exactly what one trilithon stone weighs. But lifting and moving things across land are two completely different problems. The Romans had to cut these stones from solid rock without explosives, transport them 800 meters across land that wouldn't collapse under the weight, and position them with nearly perfect precision. Archaeologists found drawings etched directly onto the trilithon stones. These were Roman construction plans, full-scale designs using Roman measurements. Dr. Daniel Lohman from the Gender Archaeological Institute found dozens of these drawings. Even more importantly, they found a date carved into one of the temple columns. August 2nd, A.D. 60. The same type of columns found under the trilithon stones match those in the temple. This proves the massive foundation and the temple above it were built at the same time by the same people. The evidence is clear. The Romans built Baalbek. This wasn't an older civilization or an advanced species. This was Rome at the height of its power, pushing the boundaries of what humans could achieve. Here's a simple fact that solves most of the mystery. The quarry sits higher than the temple site. 
Most people assume the Romans had to push 800 ton stones uphill. That's the problem everyone focuses on. If you have to move something heavy uphill, you need enormous force. You need hundreds of men. You need systems of pulleys and levers, all working against gravity. But the Romans didn't have to do any of that. They rolled them downhill. Gravity. The force that makes lifting heavy stones nearly impossible actually helped them. The path from the quarry to the temple went slightly downward. Gravity did the work instead of fighting against them. This explains why the trilithon stones made it to the temple while the even larger forgotten stone stayed in the quarry. It wasn't impossible to move the bigger stone. It just cost too much money or took too much time. Recent excavations found proof. They discovered two ancient ramps leading from the quarry toward the temple, following the natural downhill slope. In the quarry floor near the forgotten stone, archaeologists found circular wear marks in the bedrock. These marks show where ancient machines stood and rotated. The machines that move these giant stones left their fingerprints in the rock itself. For centuries, people couldn't explain how Romans moved 800-ton stones. Modern engineers would look at this problem and think, you'd need cranes, you'd need trucks, you'd need advanced technology. But the Romans had something better. They had understanding. They knew that raw pulling power wasn't the only solution. They had a machine, old, simple, but incredibly effective when used the right way. It's called a capstan. Picture this, 20 or 30 men stand in a circle around a vertical drum. Each man holds a wooden bar, like spokes on a wheel, and they all push in the same direction. As they walk in a circle, the drum rotates. That rotation multiplies their strength. What would take 200 men pulling in a line could be done by 30 men operating a capstan, all because of leverage. The Romans had perfected this ancient machine, and it was about to solve the impossible. You might be thinking, even with these machines, how do you move 800 tons? French archaeologist Jean-Pierre Adam did the math. He calculated that one capstan with horizontal bars, operated by about 24 to 30 men, could pull with a force of 8,000 kilograms. With pulley systems, they could double that force. But even with six machines pulling together, they could only create about 100 tons of force. That's only about 12% of the stone's weight. If you drag a stone across the ground, friction stops you. You need a pulling force equal to about 40% of the weight to overcome friction. For an 800-ton stone, that means you'd need 320 tons of pull. That sounds impossible. So how did the Romans actually do it? The answer is rolling. When you drag wood on wood, friction is strong. But when you place a stone on wooden rollers sitting on wooden rails, you're no longer sliding, you're rolling. This reduces the resistance to about 5% of the weight. So for an 800-ton stone, you'd need only 40 tons of pulling force. With the downhill slope helping them, suddenly moving an 800-ton stone becomes possible. Jean-Pierre Adam's calculations showed that with rollers and the help of gravity, about 144 men operating capstans could move the trilithon stones. The Romans didn't have mysterious lost technology. They had something better. They understood how levers and rollers work. They had organized teams of workers, and they were willing to spend years completing their plans. If moving 800-ton stones still sounds impossible, history proves it can be done. We have real examples of humans moving stones even heavier than the trilithon. In 1768, a granite boulder weighing about 1,250 tons needed to be moved six kilometers to the sea in St. Petersburg. This stone was heavier than the trilithon. 
and it was successfully moved using only human power. Here's what that looked like. 400 men worked for nine months. They used a sledge that slid over bronze spheres in a track, basically a giant ball bearing system. No engines, no modern cranes, just simple machines and organized teamwork. This proves that even in the 1700s, using methods not much different from Roman techniques, humans could move stones heavier than the trilithon. So the Romans, with all their engineers and workers, absolutely had the ability to move 800-ton stones. Baalbek shows the highest level of what pre-industrial people could achieve. For over 2,000 years, it's been written off as impossible. Modern engineers looked at it and thought, this shouldn't be possible. Something is missing. But nothing is missing. The Romans weren't hiding advanced technology. They were using the same physics you learned in high school. Levers, friction, gravity, mechanical advantage. They had something more valuable. Patience, organization, and the willingness to spend years on a single project. The stones sit at the absolute limit of possibility. But they're not mysterious. They're a blueprint. Baalbek means Lord of the Baca. The site sits near a spring that feeds the region's great rivers. In the ancient world, water sources were seen as special places where divine power entered the world. When the Romans arrived, they saw this as an important religious site. They built the temple of Jupiter Heliopolitanus to be the largest in their entire empire. 54 granite columns, each nearly 20 meters tall, surrounded a sanctuary that could hold thousands of people. The trilithon stones weren't just structural supports. They were religious statements. We are building for eternity. We are moving the unmovable. They were creating a foundation worthy of the gods. For centuries, Baalbek stood tall, but time and nature took their toll. Byzantine emperors took the stones and used them for churches. Muslim armies converted the temple into a fortress. But the worst damage came from earthquakes. In 1759, violent earthquakes devastated the Bekaa Valley. They toppled columns and destroyed walls. The site might have been forgotten if German Emperor Wilhelm II hadn't visited in 1898. He started the first major restoration project. That decision saved Baalbek for the modern world and made it possible for scientists to finally solve the mystery. Since 2002, the German Archaeological Institute has used laser scanning and ground-penetrating radar to figure out how the temple was built. They've documented construction drawings etched into stone, the quarry transport ramps with compressed soil from heavy loads, and capstan wear marks in the bedrock. Scientists now agree on what happened. The slope from the quarry to the temple made the work easier. Capstans, rollers, and organized workers did the rest. The mystery isn't that we can't explain how it was done. The mystery is that we doubted the Romans for so long. So what were the people who built Baalbek really trying to tell us? Not that they had alien technology. They were saying, we understand how the world works. We understand physics. And we know that great achievements take patience. The trilithon stones show human ability at its absolute limit. The precision, gaps less than half a millimeter, is still hard to match today. Baalbek reminds us that ancient doesn't mean primitive. When you stand before these stones, their message is clear. We were here. We moved the unmovable. What we built proves that human cleverness has no limits except those we accept. Recent radar surveys have found possible hidden chambers beneath the platform. Scientists haven't excavated them yet. There's more to discover. Now that you've seen how the Romans engineered the impossible at Baalbek, you might be wondering, what other ancient achievements have we gotten completely wrong? Which ancient mystery intrigues you more? Choose your next journey into the past.